I always heard that when you live on a boat, you have to know a bit about everything. So we learned a lot about carpentry, also about mechanics with the engine, and now it's turn to finally learn about electrics. Hi, we're Ben and MP, and we've been on the mission of transforming a wrecked boat into a dreamy floating home for almost three years now. Today is finally the day that we'll be tackling something that everybody has been waiting for. Have you ever imagined someone who's terrified of electric shocks becoming an electrician? Well, kind of electrician. It's gonna be a fun ride, so come along and don't forget to subscribe. As you can see, it's actually raining into the bow locker, but the relay box is gonna come here, so I'm gonna nail this onto there for now. I'll have the wires going aft to the batteries, and the wires going forward, or upwards, as a matter of fact, to the windlass. In the bow locker there's a huge fat long wire that is supposed to run from the windlass all the way down to here to the batteries which is going to be the 24 volt power cable to power the windlass. I've drilled a hole through the double bulkhead that's in front of that bed over there. So I'm just going to start pulling that wire through because that's a pain and there's lots of little corners and angles. Let's see if I can get it all the way through to here and then later fasten it into the right places. already have a lot of furniture on the boat and I am very happy with how everything is taking shape. I think we have a very beautiful boat but we also need to have a functional boat, right? So we started now working on some systems, one of them being electric. We were here actually just discussing where should each thing go. You can see they're just printed stuff, they're not the real things yet. And as we were, ah, oh, better here, better there. We got carried away, we put already some stuff in place and it's very cool because we wanted to start with the bus bar will be our first step here with the electrics. We decided to go for this, it was original from Yaba, it's super shiny now. We're gonna put them inside this for protection, we don't want it to be exposed. So here we're gonna have two little boxes like this hiding and protecting each bus bar. One will be black for negative and the other one we have a red lid for positive. And from there we can keep going with all the electric connections. Of course, we still need to bring the battery, we still need to bring the real stuff, but it's nice to already prepare the ground so for when those things are here, we can really already have everything planned out. One important rule that I learned during this boat project, I am usually paralyzed by, like overwhelmed by what we have to do and until I cannot figure out in my mind what's the best path, I don't do anything. And I learned with the boat that actually sometimes it's easier to just take the first step and then things will show the way. So we started doing this, it might not be the final position but at least we get to see and feel and then we can find better solutions by trying and not just thinking. This far 
first bus bar that will be the positive was installed by my dad and uncle and I did this one well my uncle installed the plastic I didn't install the bus bar it's not because I'm lazy it's because I like watching and learning and then doing it just like in the engine room colors make me very excited and they're helpful it's not just for the fun of it but now I can easily tell positive and negative Small interruption to the work to show you something really cool happening in the shipyard and that is that our first neighbors exciting thing happening in the shipyard today so this boat is going into water into the water tomorrow however if I go and stand straight behind it you can see it will head straight to the wall so first this boat is going to be moved over here with all these pulleys so that tomorrow when the tide is right it can go down they are going to move from there all the way up there you know how this goes a bunch of steel wires a pulley over there and the same which we used to lift the boats and a wooden crib not much more to it now it's going to be like a parallel parking kind of where the boat gets pushed up forward turns somehow without hitting our boat or this boat so that the shipyard has another one even two more places to lift some other boats for me no matter how many times they lift or move a boat it's always super exciting to see so one more boat being moved without wheels how insane is that My favorite bit about these moves is not how close the boat comes to our boat, but how close the crib comes to our supports. Those supports are literally what's keeping our boat from falling. And this is so close. If you wonder how they kind of maneuver it, first they pull that as much as possible one way, which is with that pulley. And they've got pulleys all over. And now they're gonna try and pull the bow of the boat inwards a bit and up. That's why they're working around with all these wires over here. You got to this moment, Toninho. Oh, now you see my bicho coming back. The bicho to the top. The bicho to the top. On account of all the ways I've gone wrong And I'm lonesome Lonesome and alone
Once again, we are super impressed with these maneuvers. The only thing left to do is the crib has to be removed from under the boat, which means they're jacking up the boat now and they're putting supports under the keel and wherever. So then bit by bit, they can move the crib out and move the supports, just like pulling a tablecloth from under all the glasses and the mugs and stuff. And what's really funny is they are our neighbors on our port side now. Because when we got lifted, we were kind of here and they were where we were. I bet we can find some old footage of that. And now it's sopped around. So they're gonna finish closing the hull and do a bunch of work. They're going into the water soon. They're gonna lift another pirate ship and then a yellow diving boat. And like lots is gonna be moving around now. And then we're going to the water. Don't, don't forget that. As you could just see behind me, we already installed the windows in place a while ago. But it's not doing us any good because it's not connected to anything yet. When we got your back, the windlass was working with a relay system, a system to activate the windlass. You know, these are pedals to activate it with our feet. But because of the view here from the bow of your back, it wasn't too practical to have it by the feet. So the previous owners themselves adapted the pedals in a box so we could use it manually. I don't have very big hands, so I could, could barely touch both like this, we decided to change things up. So what did we do? A brand new box, a lot bigger, more spacious, better organized and with a better control. I'm gonna explain roughly what we have here. To activate the windlass we have two relays. One relay we do the movement of taking the chain down and the other relay the movement of bringing the anchor back up. Then we have bus bars, positive and negative, they are here connecting to the windlass but also we have extra space if we ever want to connect a bilge pump or anything else here in the bow locker we already have the placement for that we also have a protective device like this we have big space here for the two thick cables that will come all the way from the battery here then we have those three over here that connect the relay box to the windlass we have one negative and two positive ones, one on each relay, so one doing each movement of the windlass. And then we also have the controls. We have this one here. This is our new control because then we can really do it with one hand. If I need to hang on the side to check the anchor, I can still press it with just one hand super easily. You can't really compare with this one. We always had the controls by the steering wheel to just working like this but they never worked before we thought it was even broken but then we tested and it was working so now we're just gonna make the connection to there even though the box is very nice it still is not doing us any good because it's not connected so we need to put it in place and then bring all the cables with power and then actually have a windlass that works Adding the protective mesh to the cable was such a hard task but I think it's so worth it because now the result here by the switch is looking so neat. I really really love it. Now all we need to do is attach this mesh protected wire all the way to the bow locker then connect it to the relay box and then we have a very neat, organized, protected and beautiful system.
cables that go all the way to the battery are now in place and it feels super nice because for a while we've been working on this box and we made the holes thinking like eventually we're gonna have a cable coming here and that eventually it's now done and it feels super nice also because of the way it was done with the protection here also this I really like the result we got here and it really is an accomplishment I'm super happy I didn't know I would be so happy and excited about electric <laughs> My dad has been a great electrician, but as a cameraman, he always makes me laugh. I tried to say that another 10 times and I would laugh every time. So let's just accept the one that I laugh a bit. I think you got the message. That's all I can do for now. That's it for the day. I believe I mentioned before that we have a control right here by the steering wheel. Since we got your bad, this was never working. It didn't have any connection, so it couldn't activate the windlass from here but as we're making the boat better in a general way we're also gonna make this work so that's what I'm gonna do now I don't know if you can see I only have three connections that I have to give to the buttons here we're gonna have our 24 volt panel I'm gonna give a positive here and then the other two wires are the ones that are gonna go all the way to the relay box at the bow locker 10 meters from here so when I activate the button, I'll be giving this positive up or the positive down. It will control one relay or the other and the chain will move down or back up. For those of you who are from my team and don't know much from electrics, just a quick explanation about the relay. The very cool thing about it is to use the windlass, I need thick wires. If I didn't have the relay, I would have to travel all the way from the windlass here with those very thick wires to this button. And the relay just saves me all that wire that I don't need. So I can just bring thin wires to the relay and then the relay will give the power needed for the windlass. So that's the very big advantage of using that. has wires but it's not connected to anything yet so now the next step is there at the bow locker you're just putting this last wire that comes this way and then the ones that will go there straight to the windlass wires from this side are connected so just a quick recap negative coming all the way from the battery positive coming all the way from the battery this gray here that I just connected is the one from the switch by the steering wheel so we can control the windlass from there and this other one is this remote so we can control the windlass here from the bow both remotes come to the relay and then they activate one way of the windlass or the other now what we need to do is this side, these cables here. For now they're loose, so we need to bring them up, connect them to the windlass, and then this installation is complete. I'm very curious to see how it is inside, because actually I was not involved in this, it was mainly Ben. Now that it's my turn to connect things, I don't know what to expect, but what I'm expecting is three places so I can put three wires. As predicted, three places for three wires. This black one is the negative, comes in the middle. The other ones are the ones that will choose the direction when we activate up or down the windlass. The three wires are in place, it was a lot easier than expected and actually now the whole system is connected. The thing is that we cannot test it yet because we don't have the power. So probably the next connections we have to do with electrics is bringing the batteries in and then we can test this out. But I think we can kind of check it from the list. This is our electric system gaining shape, it's not much yet but it's already the start of something that's gonna be big eventually. And I want to know if you enjoyed how much I showed, if you want to see more details about it or if it was too many details because we got so many comments of so many of you 
been so keen about the electronics installation that I really want to make sure that I'm showing what you want to see. Before saying bye, I would like to give a huge shout out to my dad because He's been teaching me so much about electrics, he's been extremely patient, he's been making me laugh a lot during the work day and he's just been an amazing teacher and not just teaching me but he's very hands on too so thank you so much dad and last but not least thank you so much Lars for joining us on Patreon also Phil, Richard and Brenda for donating through PayPal and James, Joseph, Duane Urban and Salty Hippie Sailing for leaving us a super thanks here on YouTube. Thank you all for watching, see you all next Sunday, let's say bye for now. If you still haven't voted for us for best refits of the year, you still have the chance. Link is below. Thank you all for watching, bye. <laughs>